Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make nail file boxes from start to finish using the Santa's Workshop Designer Series Paper by Stampin' Up. Not only that, I'm going to show you a lot of products that are featured in this year's holiday catalog by Stampin' Up. Okay, and I just want to start out with a little introduction and then I'll go over all the skills you need to learn and some of the materials you will need in case you'd like to follow along. And don't worry because all of the dimensions will be in the description. Now there are two kinds of nail files that you can find, I mean the, of this like larger size. And depending on which one you find, then you're going to need to make the boxes look slightly different sizes. So in my opinion, the cheapest nail files that are like nice and long that you can use for holiday craft fairs and gift giving are from Big Lots. That's where you find like the best prices on nail files. And you'll get like, I think, I can't remember how many are in, this is what the bag looks like. And I've used so many of them, I don't remember how many are in the bag, but after pricing them at dollar stores or at um, Dollar Tree and all kinds of stores like Tuesday morning and everywhere where I can buy them, I found that Big, big Lots is the cheapest. Okay, and sometimes I go to stores and I find this size nail file and sometimes I find it a little bigger. So I will talk about that when I talk about the dimensions. So the boxes would be just slightly different size. Okay, so the idea is that we're gonna get a piece of designer series paper. We're gonna, we're gonna cut it, score it, create a little box with it, and then decorate it. Okay, I'm just showing you a close up of these and some of the products that I used that I'll talk about in more detail. Okay, so here's another box. Every box has a piece of paper for the nail file and then a little band, a belly band going around the middle. And it also has some baker's twine. So what you will need for this tutorial, you will need some designer series paper. I hope you use Stampin' Up. I hope you have my holiday catalog and if not, contact me. If not, you just use whatever paper you have, okay? It needs to be nice and thick designer series paper so you can score it and fold it. So almost as thick as cardstock. Cardstock will work as well. And you need a stamp set for your, for your sentiments and you also need some baker's twine, okay? And you'll need some, some ink and we'll be using a couple other things as well. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna move these out of the way. Done my introduction. And everything on my table is from the Santa's Workshop Designer Series paper. So I've chosen for this tutorial, this piece here, and every, every piece is double-sided, and I've chosen this piece here. But I'm gonna actually use, nope, I'm sorry, that's the same piece. <laughs> that, was the, that was the other side. Okay, and we want, I'm sorry, this piece here with the, with the Christmas trees. Okay, so we're gonna get out our trimmer and score. We're gonna open it up because I always like to have this arm open. We're gonna start by cutting the big pieces. I, so since I'm gonna have a nail file in this box, I, you always need to make sure that you cut the paper the right way. So if the nail file is gonna be like this, then I need to first cut the paper like this. So I'm gonna cut my six inch piece the long piece, okay? And your pieces are either gonna be six or six and a half, depending on the nail file. But I will mention that in the description. You just have to determine how far out you want your nail file to stick. Okay, the reason I like using six inch boxes is because then I can get you know, more out of one sheet of designer series paper, which is 12 by 12. Okay, so we've cut the six inch piece. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut the other piece, which is three and a half inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to three and a half and I'm using my cutter. And while you're at it, I mean, make a bunch of these. Don't just do this, like, do it while you're watching TV. If you're getting ready for craft fairs, you could bring 50 of these with you. I mean, just make a bunch at once. Don't, don't make one at a time. Okay, now you have your choice. You say, okay, I want the outside of the box to look like this, or the, well, we wouldn't use this snowman on the outside of the box. The pattern's not small enough. Okay, whatever side you want to be the outside, that's the side you score on because you're gonna score and then you're gonna fold it. So let's score now. We're going to go 
start with, let me move my cutting blade away. I always have to kind of label my trimmer because sometimes I'm in the zone and I forget which one's the score and which one's the blade. So, okay, now we're gonna score. We're gonna score at one inch. Okay, I only need to score one line. One inch, 1.25 inch. Okay, and then 2.25 inches. And then two and a half inches. Okay, so close up what that looks like. You see the score lines? Perfect, now fold along the score lines. Okay, here we are. Okay, good. So now we need to make a little, a little indentation for where the, so to make the nail file stick out more and it just looks really cute. So take your, punch. Okay, so what you'll need now is your three-quarter inch circle punch, or maybe you have something else you could use, or even machines. Okay, so I'm just going to line up my punch. I like to score first. That makes my punch go exactly in the middle, and I get right on top of it, and I cut out a half circle or a little more than a half circle. Okay, see that? So that just looks cute. Now, then you're going to take your rolling adhesive, and you're gonna, you're gonna just put the adhesive along the side. So if you have snail, whatever kind of rolling adhesive, you could even be using glue. I just happen to like the kind I use. I've been using it for way longer than I've become, way longer than I've ever done stamping up. And sometimes you just have to use what you're comfortable with. So I just use my ATG. So there's how much adhesive I put on there. I put a lot. And I'm gonna overlap it, overlap the box. And I'm gonna just put that adhesive on. So. The reason I chose these dimensions is because you're hiding the back of the box. You just, the back of the box fits exactly over, see? All right, good, 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 good. Okay, so now we have, so sometimes just to help you along, like just to make sure it's secure, I put my nail file in there, especially if you're using glue. You wanna keep a nail file inside there and kind of move it around so that the glue doesn't like uh, stick to the inside of your box. But I do this just to get my adhesive to stay on really good. All right, one second. Okay, had to reach for my tacky glue. Putting back on my microphone. All right, so now the, the next part is you take the bottom of your box and you just pinch it. Just pinch in the bottom just like that. Okay, and you could, if you just wanna get this done quickly, use a stapler. But we are professional crafters here. So we are gonna use glue. So I just put a little bit of glue on the bottom here. I, I mean, not a little bit, I kind of put a lot because I actually want it to stay really good, but I'll show you how I get it to stay. So I put a lot of glue and then I let it kind of ooze out and then I push it back in and I clean off the excess glue. So I'm really making sure that it stays secure and I'm wiping that on my shorts. Okay, now I have these little clamps and I get these from like, sometimes my husband drags me to like the tool store and I got these at Harbor Freight. They were like five for 99 cents. I'm like, what could I get in this tool store? For crafters, I got some painter's tape <laughs> for my brother's Scanica, and I got some of these little clamps. So these really help. So I, move, I put a couple of them on the bottom, and then I just sort of move them around. And these just help the, the bottom of the box stay dry. Okay, now we could talk about the embellishment. So you're going to make a little band. So I, I decided to use this for my little band. So the box is drying. Let's, you know, blow on it. You know, get rid of your excess glue, let that dry, put that off to the side. And the band is only one inch. Again, make a bunch of these at once. Just get rid of the score tool. Put, I like to keep the score tool at the top. All right. And then it's one inch by, you don't want to do three and a half because remember the box is three and a half, but we have to go around the outside of the box. So I say a smidgen more. So in other words, about three and five eighths for the little band. So you're not going to, I mean, you're not going to three and four eighths, which would be three and a half. You're, you're going one smidgen behind that to about three and five eighths. Okay, and then you're getting this little band. And I don't like to score the band because I like to just wrap the band. The, the reason I do that is because after I wrap it and secure it, I can sort of slide it around to where I want it. 
So I just do that. I wrap the band around the box, making sure it's nice and if there's a nice little seam there that's along the edge. Okay, and that looks cute. So now we just sort of put a little bit of adhesive on it, and then we can sort of roll it over. You could either secure it while it's right on the box or just sort of make a bunch of these bands and slide them up the box later. Like you could secure, the, secure it now and then slide it onto your box, or in my case, I just like to just secure it right onto the box. But notice that I sort of bent, bent it before I put the adhesive on it. Oops, wrong side. No, that's, that's okay. It's the right side. It doesn't really matter, but we want, what I, what I like to do is I like, this is just me, crafty friends, you don't have to do what I do. You, you see how there's like a seam on the box? I like to put the seam of the band on the same side of this box because, you know, it just sort of looks better. Okay, now we have that. Now, then you take a piece of Baker's twine, and I have here Whisper White Baker's twine, and I have Crush Curry Baker's twine. Crushed Curry is one of the coordinating colors. Whenever you get a pack of designer series paper, you can look up right on the back and you look at the designer series paper coordinating colors. So we have black, coast, basic black, coastal cabana, crushed curry, early espresso, garden green, poppy parade, smoky slate, whisper white. Now you'll know why I'm using the poppy parade ink later and you're gonna see that I'm using crushed curry, baker's twine, because our colors coordinate so well together. Don't just grab any old baker's twine you have. You know, use something. So we're gonna do about a 10 inch piece. Use something that coordinates because, you know, our products coordinate so well that you wanna take advantage of that. So I'm gonna cut off a little piece and now we're gonna tie a little bow and see how this little clamp is still drying. I mean, down here, I'm just moving the clamp around while it's drying. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tie a little bow around and then we're going to embellish our little nail file box. Okay, we're gonna tie a bow, and yes, I still tie my shoes like my big brother taught me when I was in kindergarten. I just try to make the two loops. And if you want it to hang down more, you can make it more than 10 inches. I think that was a little less than 10 inches anyway, but you, you get the idea. So there's you have your little bow, and then we can embellish. So what we're gonna embellish right now is we're gonna do a little we're going to do one of these little four U's and we're going to embellish it because that's what I have out and that's that's what's already on my stamping block and actually we'll do we'll do a cup we can do be jolly as well I have a couple of these cut out as well all right so let's do some poppy parade because that's a coordinating color new new stamp pad uh, layout you have to sort of just like lift the front open flip it around they're really juicy so what I like to do is I take a piece, I usually use this corner to try to make, if I'm gonna have a part be less juicy, I try to use the same corner for a while because when, when the stamps are first, when you first get the stamps, they're so juicy that you're like, man, it's smearing all over the place. So that's what I do. I just use the same corner and get it less juicy. Putting down my little stamping mat, putting down my little piece of Whisper White cardstock because it has great ink absorption and I'm just stamping for you. And I already, oh yeah, I already done, a, I did a be jolly ahead of time. But what, just for good measure, we'll do one of those too, because I already have the stamping block out. So we're gonna do it for you and then we'll just do a be jolly. Okay, I'm just going to my little part of the stamping pad that has less juice on it. And you know, it doesn't matter if you mess up a stamp, just do it again. And I'm gonna stamp this little sign. And if you stick around long enough, we will get to see products from our new holiday catalog because I'm gonna be showing you all the things I used. Okay, so we have a Bee Dolly, we have a For You, and for the intents and purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna use our, the same circle punch we used earlier, the three quarter inch circle punch by Stampin' Up! that's in the annual catalog. That's what we're gonna use to embellish our little box. Okay, and I like to put it up on a foam adhesive or a glue dot, so or a dimensional. So some something you're going to stick that on. You're going to stick it on your on your little uh, nail file there, just to pop, just to pop it up, give it some dimension. I just hope I'm not smearing it. Okay, so there we have that. And before I put this on, always figure out which embellishment you're going to use. So I was thinking of using 
something I've already been stamping. So let's see if, if Mrs. Claus will work. No, she's kind of big. I have Santa Claus, which I colored. I think I'm going to get a little elf because the elves are the perfect size. And I had my whole bucket here. Here we go. I've been using the Scan and Cut, and I have lots of tutorials on how to cut out these little embellishments and things with the Brother Scan and Cut. Here's a really cute one. Look at that one. We're going to use that one. And then I'm going to do for you on the other side. So for you is going to go over here. That's why I said don't put your embellishment down yet until you figure out where you're going to put your other embellishments because then you want to make it fit. And I like when you have like things hanging off the side a little bit for um, added effect when you make things. I do that with my treats. I just have things sort of hanging off the side. So how cute. We have a little elf. We have for you. And we could stick any of these little things that I cut out. The really small things. Like I have I have cookies. I have a heart. We'll just use the tiny little heart. This this all came from the designer series paper because sometimes the stamp, the uh, scan and cut will cut out little tiny things. And I just have so much, so many cool embellishments then to use. So we'll put the little heart in there. And then we need the nail file. Okay. Find a nail, here's a nail file. Because we did the six inch box, okay? So there's another six inch box. So there, there's two boxes. And now I'm gonna talk about the products. And then I just need to clean off my table so I don't get ink all over my paper. So I'm gonna talk about the products and I'll just go over the dimensions as I do that one more time. Okay, we're, we always shed our ink. <laughs> because you, before you show anybody anything, you have to always have, you have to have your ink shut or it gets all over and you're like, how did I get ink all up and down my arm? And I'm moving my embellishments. Okay, so we have super cute products by Stampin' Up. So we have our, we have our designer series paper. Now the dimensions when you're gonna make for the smaller nail files that you find, are going to be you're going to start with a six inch piece of designer series paper at, by 3.5 inches of paper okay and i'll have the scoring down below and then when you start out with the longer nail file like the kind you get at big lots which i told you are a great deal you're going to use a six and a half inch piece of paper by three and a half inch paper and by the way this paper's flocked meaning it has little fuzzies on it it's so awesome it's three-dimensional paper that's why it's called Specialty designer series paper. I don't know if you can see that little fuzz on there. Okay, now you get the paper. We have a suite for uh, this, what do we call it? Santa's Workshop Suite, okay? And in the Santa's Workshop Suite are this really cute stamp set called Signs of Santa in our annual catalog. And it came with little signs that I was using to stamp on, like these little signs, okay? And then it came with it came with all these nice little things. I'm in the process of making lots of cards from this, so I'll probably do another video on projects you can create with the with the suite. Okay, but then coordinating with all of this is another stamp set and another suite. It is called Candy Cane Season. It is super cute, and I'm going to show you that right now. This is what I made with Candy Cane Season. So Tis the Sweet Season is a stamp, and I use Poppy Prayed to stamp this onto Whisper White cardstock. And then the best is this is Poppy Prayed. I stamped the, the candy cane, and there's a candy cane punch that you just cut out the candy cane with the punch. So how cool is that? That's called candy cane season. And that's where the, oh, by the way, that's where the Bee Jolly came from, and the For You. Okay, so that's where this one came from. For You and Bee Jolly. All right, so you got to see three featured products from the holiday catalog and I'll have a link if you like one of these holiday catalogs I'll have a link to my Stampin' Up! page where you can request one from me. So thank you for watching this is the Paper Chef until next time see you later